On the agenda today is ranking member of the Committee on Ways and Means, State Senator Vinny DiMacito. I'm your host, Dan Bell. Let's get started. Vinny, thanks for being on the show. Dan, thanks for having me. I appreciate no it. No problem. Um, let's first talk a little bit about, uh, first of all, tell me, you know, what, what's it been like your uh, first term as senator as compared to your past uh, over a decade, 16 years, I believe, in, in the House? Uh, what, what, what's been the biggest difference to you? Well, first of all, it's what an honor for me to have the opportunity uh, after serving 16 years in the House of Representatives representing the town of Plymouth and now have the opportunity to represent the Plymouth and Barnstable District, which incorporates Plymouth, uh, Kingston, and Pembroke. And then on this side of the bridge, it represents Falmouth, Bourne, and Sandwich. Um, and that enables me an opportunity to see a, a much broader section of people. 40,000 people in the House, hundreds, about 170,000 people here on the, uh, between the two districts. Mm -hmm. And so there's just there's a lot more work, mm -hmm. uh, a lot more people to deal with as far as relationships go, and a lot more challenge, you know, mm. a lot more challenges. A lot but, more uh, sleepless nights, huh? <laughs> uh, well, 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 my sense is that you know, you, like anything, it's always good to be challenged, yeah. and and I am clearly more challenged because you have more responsibilities. Yeah. Like for example, uh, we had an issue here in Sandwich, which was uh, the beach erosion. That's a big issue in Sandwich. Not as big an issue in my area, big issue there. And of course, the town of Sandwich is trying to get help from the state from the state government to help them afford that. So I've got to, in the past, when I used to just advocate for the town of Plymouth, now I have to advocate on behalf of the town of Sandwich to try to make the case for the million dollars for the beach renourishment. And as you know, that, uh, that was successful. Mm -hmm. We were able to do that. We made some progress there. You know, Falmouth has its concerns that they, you know, that, that are really important to them. Bourne has its issues, and Bourne, one of the biggest issues is the issue of uh, the uh, military mitigation money for the for the students. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, how do you help and do that? So you have to advocate on their part. And Plymouth has its battles. Each community has its own challenges. And now, when I used to just rep, you know represent and advocate for one, now I'm advocating for six. Mm -hmm. So it's more work, but I love the challenge and I've mm -hmm. loved the job. Well, congratulations. Thank you. Um, now, now looking ahead, we, we talked a little bit off camera that um, that there won't be too much going on, you know, as far as the, the calendar. They call it. They don't call it an agenda. The right. calendar. Um, so, so what what would be happening if, if there is anything? Well, well, as what happens in an election year, and this you know this November is an election year. Uh, on July thirty first, we everything goes up until July thirty first, and then we stop mm -hmm. uh, as far as controversial bills. But there's what they call informal session that continues on, and those are home rule petitions, bills that are non controversial, and those things will happen continually up until January when we go back into session. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of little things that that's important to the role of government that have to happen, but won't happen. But it's not controversial. There isn't somebody complaining. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, if there's something that's any perceived at any level controversial, all it takes is one legislator that can stop everything. Wow. One legislator out of 200 can stop anything legislatively. So it shows you that it's interesting that the power of one after we're out of session mm. is pretty significant. Uh, otherwise, it's you know it just takes the majority to rule. But there are some other things that are, could happen, and I one of the big issues is in some, an issue that I've dealt with quite a bit was the uh, revenue of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts and uh, serving on the Committee on Ways and Means. That's always been uh, a, a concern for us is how are we going to fare and we budget. So basically we think we're going to take an X mm -hmm. amount of dollars and so we expend on those, uh, those expectations. However, the first couple of months have not been as promising mm -hmm. as we've liked. We're about $36 million off of benchmark. And again, that's close to a $40 billion budget. Mm -hmm. However, September being a significant month tax revenue wise because a lot of companies do quarterlies, you're going to see some revenue. If those numbers continue where they're not showing, we're looking at about 1.5 increase mm -hmm. and we're hoping for about 3.5%. If those numbers aren't there, the governor that has to do what they then call nine C cuts. And so that's a chapter in the law that says if the revenue is not projected, the governor has a constitutional authority and requirement to balance the budget by lowering expenditures, which is very controversial. So that's something that actually could happen. Mm -hmm. And frankly, there's really nothing the legis legislature can do because they can't go back into session. Mm -hmm. So that's, that, that's some of the stuff that can happen in an informal session up and until January. Okay, great. Well, listen, let's take a little break here. 
We'll come back. Let's talk some nut, nuts and bolts, uh, just procedural things. You know, we wanted to talk about formal versus informal session, path and legislation, things like that. Okay, excellent. There are oceans and rocks, places where fish swim and birds fly, where mountains spring up and trees and grass grow all around. History is made, art is created, things happen that should always be remembered. Heroes emerge, a woman sets people free, a man makes light, a leader steps forward. People get together, they help each other out, they make their own places to run and play and contemplate the universe. There's pride and gratitude and fun. It belongs to everyone. It can be a place, a feeling, a state of mind. So get up, get out there, and find your park. OK, we're back talking with Vinny DiMacito. And um, Vinny. Let's, uh, let's get to the nuts and bolts and talk about just procedural things. Um, first of all, describe you know, what, what happens in a formal session as opposed to an informal session. A little bit about that. So, so in the formal sessions, those are sessions where you have 160 you know, representatives in the House of Representatives. A bill will come to the floor, a bill that you know, could be you know, considered uh, controversial. I mean, we just recently had a big energy bill. We had a big economic development bill. In those pieces, in those bills, we you know we are actually doing policy to change how we do uh, the environment and energy. For example, in the energy bill, we opened up what they call deep offshore wind. We created a, an infrastructure. Uh, and a mechanism in place so that uh, big companies can invest in deep offshore wind and we are pretty much the first in the nation to allow this to happen so it's a big deal and that's something that would happen of course it's controversial there are you know naysayers and there are people who think it's the greatest thing in the world that's what happens in a formal session all of us are there we vote and all you need is 50 percent of the people to make that vote and you win mm -hmm. in an informal session most of the stuff that happens are things that are, aren't controversial, things that don't necessarily have someone that's against them, home rule petitions. The town of Sandwich has decided that it wants to do something specific. They voted a town meeting. Mm -hmm. They have a vote of town meeting. We need to just uh, approve that legislatively. And so that will happen in what they call an informal session because, you know, up for, for us, the, you know, uh, the people from uh, Barnstable or, you know, Brewster don't necessarily care what, the town of Sandwich has done. They, they make it a decision, their own community. It's going to cost them personally. So it is their own decision. So those are what's happened in informal sessions. And, and then there are always things that you never know, things, you know, su supplemental budgets. The administration has some expenditures that it has to do. Mm -hmm. And all parties agree it has to happen. So we'll have a supplemental budget in an informal session. Again, one person can stop it. Mm -hmm. But generally, there's a consensus that, hey, geez, we have to do this, and that's what will happen in an informal. Okay. Um, now, let's take a look at, give us a little bit of an idea of the path of proposed legislation. You know, I mean, everybody's kind of got the basics down from the federal level, you know, being in grade school, talking about how a bill becomes a law. What about the state level? You know, it's they're all mirrored off the same type of a policy. Mm -hmm. Someone files a bill, it goes to a committee. From the committee, uh, the committee decides ought to pass or ought not to pass. If they decide ought to pass, it ends up uh, it ends up on the House floor for the second reading of the bill. The bill is then debated. Uh, you, you people decide whether you know whether they want it or not. If it passes, it then goes to third reading of the bill, comes back and will then ultimately end up uh, being engrossed. Once the bill's engrossed, it then heads over to the Senate. The Senate kind of does the same type of a version. Mm -hmm. Then at that point, when they come to an agreement, let's say it passes, the two come, you know, they two come together. If the bills are the same, it, you know, they agree on it, and it ends up in the governor's desk. Mm -hmm. the governor has 10 days to either veto the legislation or send it back with an amendment and ultimately go through that process. But that's like the textbook process. There are mm -hmm. also other ways to do it. 
Uh, there are ways to do, let, you know, I, I mentioned the energy bill. Energy mm -hmm. bills, you know, it, it was a piece of legislation that we dealt with a whole myriad of different energy issues. Hydro, nuclear, solar, uh, you know, deep, sh deep offshore wind. And in having that conversation, when you're dealing with energy, well, uh, not too far down the road, there's a nuclear power plant. It's mm. being decommissioned. That's mm. an energy issue. Myself and Dan Wolf uh, filed legislation that would create a uh, commission that studied the whole concept of decommissioning because that doesn't happen every day. Mm -hmm. There aren't many nuclear power plants in the entire country. So when what happens to a you know to a region when they decommission? What should they be? What should they be looking at and thinking about? Uh, what should they be doing for economic development because 650 jobs are, do, uh, mm -hmm. are leaving? What should they be doing for public safety? Uh, how does that work? What we should be doing about dry cast storage? Uh, the, those spent fuel rods end up in dry cast storage. And should those, those dry cast storage be leaving and going somewhere like the federal government? Uh, and, the, and so what happens is, I, and I mentioned this all to say that, uh, that that's a piece of legislation. We didn't do it through the general process I just told you. Mm -hmm. We added it as an amendment to an energy bill, and in that amend in that energy bill, we got it approved in the Senate. It went to conference. It ended up. It went to the governor's desk, and the governor signed it. So different mechanism. Mm -hmm. There's always different vehicles to legislation, mm -hmm. and so that's that's kind of you know what what I try to do is I try to find, especially for my community, what what's an important way mm -hmm. uh, that we can have an, you know an impact for my community that that, that we do it. So you find different vehicles in different areas. And of course you go through the whole other process. You know, either way is is acceptable. It's you just gotta be creative and make sure that you're always have your you can always have an opportunity to, to take a fight, you know, take the fight to the legislature mm -hmm. for your community that's important to the community. And that was something that was clearly I heard from the community they wanted us to do. Well that that's good. That leads us into the next question. We're talking um, uh, how does something actually become a a ballot, voter ballot question. You know, proposed legislation is actually going to be voted on by the general population as opposed to our elected representatives. Right. And so, they, you know, there are people who feel like they, they're not getting, you know, opportunity to be heard because a bill's gone to the legislature, hasn't gone anywhere, hasn't gone anywhere. Mm -hmm. And so what they do is they say, okay, well, we're just going to go directly to the people, the ballot initiative. The thing that they have to do then is they have to, they have to get, t uh, like, I think some like 80,000 signatures. I think it's 67,000, but you want more. Um, and then th when they do that, then they've said, okay, the legislature, you have to take this up. But we just have to take it up. It doesn't mean we have to pass it. Mm -hmm. Then it goes to the legislature. The legislature hears the bill, and they look at it and say, well, we still don't think it should pass. Then what has to happen is then they have to go back and get like another 20,000 signatures mm -hmm. to get enough to get it to tell the Secretary of State to put it on the ballot so that now the voters, so a... a, a uh, a ballot question will go to the voters instead of the legislature. So it's circumventing the legislature and going to the voters and they make a decision. So we have the four of them this year in, on the ballot coming up. Four ballot initiatives that the voters uh, have decided, that people have put on the ballot, that the voters will now decide. Not us in the legislature, mm -hmm. but you the voters. So uh, one of them is uh, the issue of charter schools, mm -hmm. uh, which is being hotly contested. Another one is the expansion of uh, slot machine parlors. Um, another one is an issue about animal cruelty. And the last one is the legalization of recreational marijuana. Mm -hmm. So those are four issues. You're probably going to see a lot about it on TV because mm -hmm. there's going to be a lot of ads, you know, saying why this one is good and why that one's bad and back and forth. But now you become the legislature. All the people that are listening become the legislators. And I always say, be careful because the devil's in the details. Mm -hmm. We have pretty extensive pieces of legislation coming before the voters. And it's not just a yes or no, it's really what is in the, what is in the 30, 40, 50 pages of legislation because that's where you can put anything, have a really nice title, uh, but you know, the law is, becomes uh, binding. And so you have to be mindful of that. And so really educate yourself on the facts. Mm -hmm. And that's what, I, you know, that's what I've tried to do as a legislator. And when you have ballot initiatives, that's what you as citizens need to do. Well, Vinny. Thanks so much for being here. My pleasure. Thanks very, for having very me. Very, very informative. I and I hope, so. uh, hope to have you back. I'm going to try and do this quarterly. Um, maybe next time we get uh, the house rep, uh, Randy, in here. 
but um, always a pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. Nice to be on your show.